I recently finished watching most of Mario Barber's filmography. There's still a few more I need to track down that have proven hard to find, but I've covered most of them. Fantastic director. I've really enjoyed my time watching his spooky and atmospheric gothic horror flicks and want to find similar films. I was recommended the Edgar Allan Poe adaptions done by legendary B-movie producer Roger Corman in the 60s, so I thought it would be a good idea to start with a film called The Mask of Red Death. It wasn't quite what I was looking for, but then again, nobody quite does Barva like Barva, except maybe Dario Argento with Inferno and Suspiria, but the movie was close enough. It concerns a cruel tyrant, Prince Prospero, played by Vincent Price, who rules over the local land with no regard for the villagers, his friends, or anyone really. Meanwhile, a plague known as the Red Death is sweeping the land, painfully killing those who are infected. Prospero utilises this by keeping his friends of high society in his castle, who are unable to leave lest they face the Red Death, and he entertains himself with a mask, a kind of olden day mask dance. Now when I say the prince is cruel, I mean he is cruel. I'm talking burning entire villages down, shooting those who seek refuge in his castle, making family members fight to the death for his amusement. The film evidently does have a bit of a mean streak going on and there's lots of notable grim and ghastly death scenes, the most memorable of which is where during the mask one of the more unpleasant nobles is tricked into dressing up as an ape tied to the ceiling like a piñata and set on fire whilst the entire court watches him withering and screaming in pain left to die, much to the glee of the prince. The movie is a lot creepier than I was prepared for and there's a cynical undercurrent, most prevailing at times like when the prince tells his friends shall we call them, to act like dogs and snails, and the entire court, including those who are acting like animals, roar in laughter while they get on all fours and humiliate themselves. We as the viewer know that the guests are not enjoying this, they're just trying to keep the prince happy and avoid getting a one-way ticket to the dungeons. Eventually it's revealed that the guy is a devil worshipper and the film takes a bit of a weird seventh sealed kind of turn with death appearing in human form and unleashing, well, death. Price was great, and he really looks like he relished the opportunity to play someone as cruel as the prince. Every act of malice in the film gets a blissful smirk or sometimes a childlike grin from Price. He really did sell himself well as a man who genuinely enjoys seeing others suffer. The rest of the cast were pretty unmemorable for the most part, most of them blandly reciting their lines with little emotion, even when they're being put to death. Jane Asher is the closest thing the film has to a protagonist and for the sake of the plot's development she seems oddly relaxed after seeing her father shanked with a sword and his lifeless body sprayed on the ground, but I guess that's the kind of thing you have to expect with Corman's movies. I like the look of the film, it had a gothic creepy aesthetic close to what I was looking for in the first place, made effective through the use of set design and ample use of smoke machines. The colours were muted in the outside scenes giving off a spooky vibe whilst the colours inside the castle often had a vibrant contrasting look which worked well for the ball. The camera work was a little flat and uninspired and I don't know if it was for the sake of extending the runtime to a theatrical release but there were a lot of scenes of Asher staring at walls and doors that just seemed to go on forever. The film is a mild entry into the gothic horror world anchored by a delightful Vincent Price performance, a creepy look but not much else. But in general, what the movie does, it does well. It's just that aside from those things already mentioned, the film doesn't have much else to offer. I suppose it's worth watching, but I doubt it's a strong enough film for me to revisit in the future. The Mask of Red Death gets a 6 out of 10 for me.